Hi everyone, welcome to ISTQB training, test automation engineer, session number five. So we started second module in our last session, which is regarding preparing for test automation, and we will continue the same in today's session. So in today's session, we will cover 2.2, which is about tool evaluation and selection. Okay, so tool selection and evaluation is primarily the responsibility of test automation manager. Test automation engineer is involved in supplying information to test automation manager and conducting most of the selection and evaluation activities. So the concept of tool evaluation and selection process, it was introduced at the uh, foundation level, level syllabus, where role of test manager and testers were covered. So I have attached the video and I will also add it in the description as well if you just want to go through it again to recall. So more details of this uh, selection and evaluation process is described in the advanced level test manager certification syllabus. Uh, in regards to this syllabus, we will only focus on the role of test automation engineer throughout the tool evaluation and selection process. Okay, so a test automation engineer contributes in the following activities. The first one is assessing organizational maturity and identification of opportunities for test tool support. Okay, let's have a look first of all that what is meant by organizational maturity. So organizational maturity is basically a measure of an organization's capability and the consistent measurement practices that are in place. So it's very important to understand um, any organizational maturity as it's measured against a standard and it basically forms a baseline for measuring improvement. So this maturity assessment is usually has uh, four as aspects which are people, processes, data and technology. So whenever a test automation engineer is assessing um, any tool, then they need to take care of the uh, of their organizational maturity and then identify that which uh, which tool would be suitable for their organization. Number two, assessing appropriate objectives for test tool. OK, so uh, when we are selecting any tool, we do need to understand that what is the purpose? What are the objectives? So these objectives can be maybe to improve efficiency of test activities or maybe uh, to increase the reliability of testing. So it depends from organization to organization that what are basically objectives and why you need uh, a test tool support. Number three, identifying and collecting information on potentially suitable tools. OK, so whenever you are looking for a potential automation tool, it will not be the case that you have just seen one automation tool which might be working for uh, some of uh, some other person, some other company. And because it's working well for them, it will work the same for you as well. So it will never be the case. So uh, always make sure that uh, you are testing, you are evaluating at least few tools and then identify that among all these tools, which will be more suitable for your company, for the project which you will be testing it for, uh, using it for. Number four, Analyzing tool information against objectives and project constraints. OK, so every tool have different strengths, but you need to just make sure that you are evaluating, you are analyzing the tool against the objectives which you require. Like, for example, if you uh, if your objective is to increase the reliability of testing and uh, there are some project constraints, then you have to make sure that the tool which you are selecting is aligning to these requirements. Number five, 
estimating the cost benefit ratio based on a solid business case okay so what is a business case so business case is a document which basically states potential benefits of a project and it acts as a basis for stakeholder decision so whenever you are introducing a new tool and you have uh, selected a tool of course you will uh, create a business case which will be presented to stakeholders uh, stating its uh, pros and and how it will be useful uh, for the company or a specific project and how it will be useful uh, will be stated by the cost benefit uh, ratio so cost benefit would be it will be de to determine the expected financial returns and uh, profitability of a tool or a project because that's what the stakeholders will be interested in that okay this automation tool uh, which we will be buying the license for what will be the return for the company or for the project number six making a recommendation on the appropriate tool so once you have analyzed evaluated and most probably selected a tool then you are in a better position to recommend the tool so that's where uh, that's what uh, comes under the job of test automation engineer has as well and then test automation engineer can recommend one tool or maybe a couple of tools to test automation manager number seven identifying compatibility of the tool with system under test components so that's really really important uh, because if it's a very famous test automation tool it doesn't mean that it will be compatible with the system you are using because your goal is to automate your system but if the tool which you are choosing is not even compatible with your system then um, it's just a waste of time and money Okay, so functional test automation tools frequently cannot meet all the expectations or the situations that are encountered by an automation project. Okay, so if there is a project and we want to automate it, uh, it will never be uh, perfectly automated. Like there can't be any functional test automation tool which we can say is perfect and which is uh, which will be covering or meeting all the requirements or all the situations which we will come across while automating that project there will always be uh, some kind of issues or constraints and then that's why we need to analyze and evaluate and carefully select the tool because uh, we need to see that what are the key things which we definitely require in an automation tool and which are the things which maybe are of low priority for us so this syllabus it covers a few set of examples of these type of issues this list is definitely not complete but it is just to give you an idea that when you are when you have selected an automation tool and you are using a tool what kind of issues may occur so that when you are um, analyzing evaluating a tool you keep think these things in your mind so let's have a look issue number one finding is the tools interface does not work with the other tools that are already in place so we have a few examples for that let's go through that so the examples are the test management tool has been updated and the connecting interface has changed and the information from pre-sale support was wrong and not all data can be transferred to the reporting tool okay so this means that you have bought a licensed automation tool you are uh, you are quite excited to use it to implement it in your organization but you get to know that that tools interface is not working with the other tools which you are already using in your company so that's why it's very important that uh, whenever you are evaluating a tool you need to make sure that that tool fits in with your existing technology stack because at some point 
you need to integrate them and if it's not compatible if it the interface is not working uh, with the other tools which you are already using then uh, it will not be useful and the example which the other example they have mentioned the information from pre-sales support was wrong and not all data can be transferred to the reporting tool okay so whenever you are um, evaluating an automation tool especially a license tool uh, you always uh, get lots of demos and I think even if you are not getting a demo you should ask for demos from that company because of course the company's sales team will uh, will definitely try to sell their product to you and but you need to make sure that uh, it's, it's the right tool for your organization for your project so that's why uh, you need to make sure that you are asking the right questions from their sales team and you're all, all asking for the demo as well well let's see that what are the possible solutions uh, mentioned over here number one Pay attention to the release notes before any updates and for big migrations test before migrating to production. Okay, so whenever uh, there is a new release to the tool you are using, there's a new upgrade to the version, uh, you will always be sent some release notes that in this release, in this upgrade, what's being changed. So you need to have a look at that carefully uh, so that you are aware of that, that um, these changes how it will impact the way you are already using so maybe that tool was already working for you but then uh, suddenly because of an um, of any update or any big migration it stopped working so you need to pay attention to the release notes the second one is try to gain an on-site demonstration of the tool that uses the real SUT so as I mentioned before try to have a detailed demo version and also it will be good if you can ask um, the sales team to give you uh, a free trial of maybe 15 days or 30 days so that in that trial period you are using that tool with your project and if there are any constraints if there are any, uh, are any limitations you will get to know in that period the last one is seek support from the vendor and or user community forums okay so if it's a licensed tool, then of course you need to go back to the vendor and you need to ask for support. So mostly uh, all the licensed tools support system, they are quite good. And uh, if you are having any kind of issues, definitely they will try their best to resolve it. Sometimes it also happens that uh, if there are multiple clients who are asking for a feature which is not there, then in the following upgrades they they try to accommodate that they try to add those things as well so uh, because of course they don't want uh, to lose a customer uh, because of course if something is not working for you then you will not upgrade the license for the following year you might will go to some other vendor for some other tool so def most uh, mostly the support systems of these vendors um, all these tools are quite good and they uh, support you a lot to get your issue resolved and or user community forums so let's say that if you are using an open source tool then there are lots of community forums and there are community forums for the license tools as well so it might be that the issue which you are having uh, there are other people as well in some other companies who are having the similar issue so you might get some possible solutions from there okay let's have a look at issue number two finding some SUG dependencies are changed to ones not supported by the test tool. Okay, let's see what's the example. The development department has updated to the newest version of Java. Okay, so it might be that uh, the development team has upgraded to the newest version of Java. There is a new version of Java released in the market and of course development version development team they have upgraded to the newer version. But let's say that your automation test framework is also in Java but it is using an older version. So this means that uh, maybe your test tool 
is not able to upgrade to the newer version or it's not working with the newer version so uh, right now there will be incompatibility between the release versions of Java in the test tool and in the dev tool as well. Possible solutions. Synchronize upgrades for development test environment and the test automation tool. Okay, so this is a good solution that whenever you are upgrading any release version, then the development and test team, they need to be in sync. They need to discuss it with each other. So let's say that if development team is planning to upgrade to the newer version, uh, then they need to discuss it with the test team as well that, okay, we are planning for a new version, but uh, will your test tool support that new version? And maybe the test tool, uh, the test team will say that, okay, uh, yes, it's perfectly fine. We can also upgrade to this new version and it will work fine. Or maybe uh, there is a constraint that uh, uh, right now uh, the tool is not ready to be worked against the newer version. So in that case, then development team can also hold off that uh, upgrade. The next one is object on graphical user interface could not be captured. Okay, so the example is the object is visible, but the test automation tool cannot interact with it. Right, so whenever we have a graphical user interface and we are using a test automation tool, the way it uh, interacts with the interface is that it identifies, it locates the elements on the um, on, on the interface but in this case the example is given that it might be that uh, the objects the elements are visible on the interface but the test automation tool for some reason is not able to interact with it and if it's not able to interact with it then of course we can't uh, we can't automate it Possible solutions are try to use only well-known technologies or objects in development. Right, okay, so it might be because the, the, the specific technology used for developing that system is not very well known or there is an unknown issue where it's hard to capture the objects. Number two is do a pilot project before buying a test automation tool. Right, that's a good one. Uh, you are using uh, a test automation tool to automate your system. So definitely you need to first do a pilot project, like maybe get a trial version and test it against your system, or maybe one sample project and then see if it's working as you're expected as expected is it possible to capture all the objects all the elements on the user interface or not because if there is an issue this means that again there is a compatibility issue and this specific tool is not working for uh, for your system and the last one is have developers define standards for objects okay so yeah this one is quite important as well because uh, sometimes when developers they are writing their code uh, in many companies they do have coding standards and uh, developers are following the coding standards as well all the best practices but maybe in few companies they are not using it because maybe they are not any defined set of standards uh, when it comes to coding and there are multiple developers every developers have a different style of coding so uh, it would be good if they have um, some best practices some best coding standards which they are using which then will be helpful for the testers uh, because then using a test automation tool they will be able to locate the objects issue number four tool looks very complicated okay examples the tool has a huge feature set but only part of that will be used right okay so when we are uh, looking for a new test automation tool this one is a very common uh, problem because when we say that uh, okay we have to buy a test automation tool then we are usually impressed by the huge set uh, of features in that tool that okay this tool is doing this as well and there are many other things which uh, the tool is supporting 
But instead of getting impressed by the huge set of features of that tool, you need to focus on what are you expecting from that tool? Because it might be that there are hundreds of features in that tool, but maybe the one which you are planning to use, maybe it's very complicated or maybe the entire support uh, of this hundred set of features is making the tool very complicated. So it depends that uh, what kind of features you are expecting from a test automation tool. And if it's a very, if there is an, uh, a simple tool which doesn't have lots of features, but enough to fulfill your requirements, then you don't need to go for a complicated tool because it might be the case that uh, uh, while you are trying to understand the automation tool or trying to implement it because of the other features as well, it, uh, it makes it very complicated for you to use it. So it's better to go for the minimal features which you will be using. Yes, do take care of uh, uh, the, sc the scalability in mind as well that in future how you are planning to scale the test automation framework and yes there should be a support uh, but I think that this will, there should be a balance so let's see that what possible solutions they have proposed okay try to find a way to limit the feature set by removing unwanted features from the toolbar okay so uh, yeah we can do that as well so most of the tools when we are using them they are customizable so let's say if there are 10 features but to start with you only need two of them and uh, if there is an um, there's a setting or uh, you have that feature where you can disable the other features which you might not need to uh, use right now so you can do that you can disable them so that your focus will be only on the features which you want to use the second one is select a license to meet your needs okay so you must have seen that when you are opting for any license then there are different packages and there is a, like a basic pack, uh, basic and then uh, a premium one or an ultimate one. So they are like different kind of packages with uh, different prices. So instead of going for the ones which are quite expensive and uh, offering lots of features, first of all, have a look at the basic one. If the basic one is giving you everything you need right now, then that's sufficient. Then go for that. And maybe as you evolve, as you uh, go further in test automation and your team grows, your organization grows, you can always upgrade to the uh, other package as well. The last one is try to find alternative tools that are more focused on the required functionality. Okay, so a good example would be that uh, let's say you just want to focus on um, on functional automation testing. You just want to focus on the graphical user interface testing. But then there is a tool which also offers, uh, apart from graphical user interface testing, it also offers API testing. It also offers non-functional testing or many other kind of testing as well, maybe BDD as well. So, uh, there are a lot of features, but you don't need all of them. If you are looking for a minimal uh, set of features, then maybe from all the uh, this tool, which is quite complicated as compared to that, a tool which is a very basic one and you can automate your graphical user interface using it, that would be preferable. Next issue is conflict with other systems. And the example for this is after installation of other software, the test automation tool will not work anymore or vice versa. Okay, so let's say that uh, your test automation tool is working, but there is a new software when it's installed, then it stopped working or it can be the other way around as well. So the possible solutions for these are read the release notes or technical requirements before installing. So whenever you are installing a new software, 
either it's a new software or you are installing a test automation tool first just see the release notes because in the release notes they have given the technical requirements and you'll get to know if there is any any kind of conflict which may occur between the systems the second one is get confirmation from the supplier that there will be no impact to other tools so whenever you are going to purchase a tool from any vendor of course you will be discussing uh, your requirements and uh, you will tell that what are the existing tools which you are using what are the systems you are using if there are specific versions etc so you will make sure that you are getting all the details from the supplier so that you can um, you can make sure that uh, the tool which you are getting is working with your system or if you are getting a new software then when you will be um, integrating it with your test automation tool if there will be any conflict or not so any supplier before purchasing you can get all these details the last one is question user community forum so again if there are any uh, user community forums online then that's the best place to see uh, before purchase that if they are other people who have a similar kind of issue or not next issue is impact on the system under test and the example is during or after use of the test automation tool the SUT is reacting differently for example longer response time all right so let's say that a system was working perfectly fine but uh, after we we, start, uh, we have integrated it with a test automation tool. It has impacted the performance of that system. And a possible solution is use a tool that will not need to change the SUT, for example, installation of libraries, etc. Right. So we did uh, talk about uh, the level of intrusion in the last session. And this is similar to that, that whenever you are using um, any test automation tool, the best tool for your system would be the one which will require no changes to your existing system because if there are changes required in your system just to or maybe like very minimal one if they uh, if they require huge level of intrusion that then it will impact um, uh, the performance of your system and it might be uh, just uh, uh, creating other issues as well next issue is access to code the test automation tool will change parts of the source code okay so this is quite concerning that uh, if the test automation tool in order to use that tool against the system it requires changes in your in your code and it requires uh, access to your code this is more, uh, really concerning from a security perspective as well, especially if you are using a third party automation tool and you do want to use that tool for automating your system, but definitely you don't want to give access um, to, uh, to your system uh, to a third party tool. So, so that's why uh, that's not very ideal. So use a tool that will not need to change the source code, for example, installation of libraries, etc. So yeah, that's the ideal solution that we should go ahead with the tool. Uh, so whenever you are uh, planning to purchase a tool, you can always ask, you can always test that whether that how it will be installed internally in your organization how it will interact with the system you will be using it against and will there be any kind of changes you need to make in the code in order to get that tool working for it next issue is limited resources mainly in embedded environments so the example is the test environment has limited free resources or runs out of resources, for example, memory. OK, so if you are using a test um, test automation tool and uh, the test environment has very limited free resources, then it might be that because of the use of that automation tool, uh, 
it just runs out of resources like uh, the memory is not there so it runs out of memory so that can be a, an issue as well the possible solutions are read release notes and discuss the environment with the tool provider to get confirmation that this will not lead to problems. Okay, so everyone's test environment in the organization is different. So you always need to first check with the supplier that uh, in your test environment, how that tool will work. Will it impact any other resources which are already there in, the, in your test environment or not? Because, of course, you don't want to end up with any issues in your test environment. And the next one is question user community forum. So, yes, that, that's always uh, useful for, for different scenarios that uh, you can post a question in the user community forum for that tool. Or maybe you already you can spot out um, similar issues or similar questions posted by some other companies. So the last issue is updates. And the examples are update will not migrate all data or corrupts existing automated test scripts, data or configurations. Upgrade needs a different, better environment. OK, so let's say your automation tool is working perfectly fine. And then there is an upgrade. There is a new version of the tool. And as soon as you are trying to update that tool, maybe your environment is not compatible with it. Maybe uh, the, the new version is not compatible with your environment. And in order to upgrade it, you have to uh, actually upgrade your test environment as well. Or if you are, uh, because of the update, there is some data which will not be migrated and it will be corrupted when you are migrating it to the new, um, uh, when it's updated. So definitely that would be an issue. Possible solutions are test upgrade on the test environment and get confirmation from the provider that migration will work. Okay, so whenever you are uh, going ahead with that, you can uh, first of all ask from the tool provider that uh, if you are migrating to a new upgrade, a new updated version, then there will not be any issue. The second one is read update prereqs and decide if the update is worth the effort. Okay, so whenever there will be updates, there will be some technical uh, requirements which will be given. There will be some prerequisites mentioned in the document in the release notes as well. That in order to update that, these this is the uh, these are the minimum requirements for the in, uh, for the environment where you are installing. Then uh, you can go ahead and have a look at those and then see if it works for your environment or not. And the last one is seek support from the user community forum. So again, uh, if there is a user community forum for the tool you are using, then it's best to use that. Okay, sorry, that was not the last one. I thought that was the last issue. Okay, so this one is security. And the example is test automation tool requires information that is not available to the test automation engineer. Right, okay, so when we are using a third party tool, uh, it's it's quite tricky because it's not your tool. You haven't uh, built it internally. It's not part of your organization. But in order to test the system which you have developed internally, it has to interact with that. So it, we need to make sure that uh, we are very clear about how it will be interacting with the system. If there are any changes which are required, especially in terms of security, because every company, they have their own security policies. So it might be that um, in order to install, configure, or use the tool, uh, the test automation engineer requires some specific 
details which uh, he or she might not have access to because of their company security policies. And the possible solution is that the test automation engineer needs to be granted access. OK, so now over here, this is where um, the test automation engineer or the test team, they need to work with the maybe security team of their of their organization that, OK, this is a tool which we want to use and uh, these are the uh, limitations which we have so can we have the access and of course after evaluation if it's okay to give them the access it will be granted or if there are security issues then maybe they will say that okay we can't grant you this specific access but we can offer an alternate so maybe they can come up with some other way where you can still use that tool. Next issue is incompatibility between different environments and platforms. Test automation does not work on all environment platforms. So this is also a very common issue that uh, when you are trying to automate uh, a system and you are using a tool, it works on few environments, on few platforms, but it doesn't support maybe a few versions like for example maybe you are using uh, a browser uh, any any tool but it's not compatible with a specific version of any browser or maybe it's not compatible with an operating system so they can be in uh, these kind of issues and the possible solutions are Implement automated tests to maximize tool independence, thereby minimizing the cost of using multiple tools. OK, so uh, that's why when you are implementing uh, the automated test, uh, you need to make sure that uh, it's maximizing the tool independence, because when you are focusing more on the tool independence, then um, it can minimize the cost of using multiple tools. So you can use multiple tools for that as well. And uh, it may resolve the issue of um, the test automation tool, which is uh, not working on a specific environment or platform okay so I hope that uh, you have found this uh, session useful and uh, if there is any question then definitely you can either ask me in the comment section or you are most welcome to join our Facebook group as well and so please like and share this video and also consider subscribing to my channel I'll see you soon in the next video till then take care